Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about how to cut down bar stool legs so that they fit under a kitchen counter height. You know, some of the joys and as, as well as frustrations with kitchen remodeling is often finding the right stool height. Once you've remodeled your kitchen, you've got beautiful granite countertops and peninsulas and, and bars and so forth. Many bar heights are 42 inches standard, whereas kitchen, most standard kitchen counters are 36 inches. So you have two different bar stool heights. And sometimes even uh, kitchen counters can be even shorter, legroom shorter, because you have a, a trim, a skirt trim going around on long overhangs that are supported typically by furniture legs. So if you can't find that right stool to fit your kitchen and you simply fall in love with a, a bar stool and you must have it, well then you got to cut the legs down. Trimming bar stool legs down to fit under an existing countertop is a great DIY opportunity to show off your skills. And it shouldn't take more than a half hour to an hour per stool once you have certain things in place. Uh, and again, basic tools for the most part. In order to get consistent and clean cuts, I recommend that you rely on using a jig or a cutting jig. Jigs help keep us honest and ensure that all four legs are cut at the exact same height and there's no wobble. There's no going back to fix this a second time. You gotta get it right. So let's talk about making a cutting jig, because this is really the most important thing you can do when you're going to do this procedure. I used scrap plywood, scrap AC plywood, and I ripped it to a specific height. Mine was five inches. I wanted to lower my bar stool five inches. And um, so I ripped it, I, I got a nice long piece, ripped it down on the table saw to five inches wide, and then I cut that uh, into three pieces to make my cutting jig. The legs, or the long portions of my cutting jig, are arbitrary size. I left them long so that I could rest the saw on top of them, use them as a um, as a guide. The shorter person, or the edge, the back back edge, or the spine of my jig, is the exact thickness, a little bit bigger, pencil size, of my leg. Uh, also, I added a, a strip on my jig, so you'll see in, in the B-roll video that I show, that I use as a clamping or a hold down, and that keeps it down onto the table, nice and secure, uh, you can also screw it to the workbench if you want. You should, I should note that some chairs or stools have flares or angles in their legs, and you can, you can make this piece, this back piece, slightly angled or canted if you need to, to better fit the leg flare. I didn't need it on mine. I had a slight flare. It, it didn't matter as long as you clamp it tight. So once that's made, you've got to make supporting uh, support stilts or supporting legs and I basically just use scrap five five inch strips left over and I half lap them like this and screw them together the support stilts are clamped to the legs and as you cut the leg off and remove the scrap you put it underneath in, in place of the cutoff piece and keep the, the chair level and keep it from wobbling and you'll do that to all three you'll need three of them and you'll do it to all three until you get to the last leg um, one thing I should notice, if you notice in the video, that my rear legs are thinner than my front legs. So all I did is I used three pieces of quarter-inch Luan plywood. And I, I basically just stuffed them in there, shimmed them, to fill the space between the stool leg and my cutting jig. Once, once you've got all these things together and we're ready to go, it's time to start cutting your legs. First thing you want to do is place your chair on a flat level surface. You don't want a wobble, you want it nice and secure. I use my workbench. Then we're going to slide, you slide your cutting jig over the legs and clamp it to the, to the leg as well as secure it to the table. When you clamp it to the leg on, the, on this portion here, it actually creates a little bit of a pinching pressure which really grabs on and holds the leg. Once everything is secure and ready to go, I use a pull saw. It's called a dovetail saw. I've heard it called a Japanese saw. It cuts on the pull. I use a pull saw and I just basically use the top of my, my support here and I, and I just cut right through using the saw on the cutting guide. I, 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 once I'm done cutting that leg, I take that off. I use a support. I put a support under it and I move to the next legs and I repeat the steps over and over. When it's all said and done, I used sandpaper to break the sharp edges, cleaned it all up, and I used a green self-sticking 
felt to, to protect the chair from sliding along on the floor, hardwood floors. You can also use a marker. I used a black Sharpie, but you can use a stain marker, a stain pen, or a marker for any scratches as well on, on, from cutting. Sometimes you make a little scratch. Bottom line is using a cutting jig is the best way to ensure quality, accurate, and consistent cutting of chair legs. Take the time to make the jig, do it right the first time. I'm Rob Robillard. Please subscribe to my video channel, and you can read the entire article at ConcordCarpenter.com. Take care.